like to thank Google for Education and their partner Tech Valley, the lead sponsor for School of Tomorrow 2023, and our titanium sponsor, United Bank Limited. Other key sponsors include My Backpack, MK Books, Allied Bank Limited, Habib Bank Limited, Watheen, and Interwood. We also thank our School of Tomorrow supporters, including Paramount Books and Nestle Pure Life, who have contributed to this year's event. My name is Mohammed Qasim, and I'm an IGCSC and A-Levels Mathematics teacher at Beacon House, Boroha Campus, Islamabad. Please take a moment to note these important housekeeping points. Please ensure your cell phones are on silent. In case of an emergency, the exit point is located at the back of this hall, you may use the staircase opposite to this hall in case if it is blocked or packed, you may use the one on the right hand side. Always stay calm and follow directions. Please use the SOT app to scan the QR code for session question answers and feedback. Share your thoughts on social media using the hashtags, hashtag guardians of the future and hashtag SOT2023. If you need assistance, our ushers are here to help. For questions, please either use the flashcards provided by the ushers or the mobile app. The panel discussion will last for about 45 minutes, followed by 15 minutes for question and answer. I would like to invite the moderator of the session, Mr. Asfanyal Kasuri, on the stage and introduce the panelists. Mr. Asfanyal Kasuri. As a tech entrepreneur and development sector specialist, he's dedicated to using technology for social impacts in Pakistan. He serves as the executive director of New Globe, a global leader in supporting governments to digitally transform public education. Mr. Kasuri is also a prominent advocate for legal tech-based reform, striving to revolutionize how Pakistanis access justice. He has directed programs focusing on humanitarian aid in post-disaster situations. Mr. Satsbandar. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, uh, we are still waiting for one of our panelists, but I think she's on her way, so we'll uh, get on uh, with the introductions. Um, firstly, uh, as you heard, my name is Isfandiar. Um, welcome to the 16th edition of uh, SOT events guardians of the future, shaping tomorrow with generative AI. As a moderator of today's panel discussion titled, Beyond the Hype, Pursuing Substance in the Age of Breaking News, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you all. Today's panel discussion promises to be an enlightening one uh, about the very important role of a balanced and trustworthy news media in fostering an informed and peaceful future and building democratic institutions. Without further ado, I will introduce um, the panelists that have joined us here today. Um, uh, sitting to my left, uh, fellow panelists from yesterday, Memel Sarfraz, she needs very little introduction. She has been in the media since 2005. She is a co-founder of The Current, which is a really cool news and online media portal. Um, it is, uh, she is also an analyst on the Geo News Show Report Card, and she's um, also a, a co-host of Aurat Card, um, which is the first all-women's news uh, channel in Pakistan, commendable, that is. Um, sitting all the way at the end is um, Anilo Farkazi. Um, she is a public policy specialist, and she is the author of Culinary Tales from Balochistan, a book that she published in 2022. I'm a witness to the hard work that she put into developing that, and it is ever so important and always uh, underplayed the importance of preserving these cultural, our culture, um, and so we are very happy to have her with us. She has a video series also called Pakistan on a Plate. It explores uh, uh, the culinary heritages that have been mentioned in the book as well. Beyond that work, she's a dedicated philanthropist. She works on disaster relief, has spent a lot of time in Balochistan, um, in Jafrabad, engaged in rehabilitation. 
Um, she uh, and I um, uh, also uh, have, uh, well, I supported her petition. There is a NOTA petition in the Lahore High Court. NOTA stands for none of the above. We have been trying for some years to get that option on the ballot for any election there is. I don't like the Noon guy. I don't like the PTI guy. I don't like the People's Party woman. I don't like any of them. None of the above. Anyway, fingers crossed that might happen soon. Um, thank you for joining us, Manise. Um, uh, Nilo, thank you for joining us, Manise. Um, uh, it's okay. Uh, I heard you got a little bit lost getting in here. Uh, Manise Jangir is um, uh, obviously a renowned broadcast journalist, and she's an award-winning documentary maker. She hosts Spotlight with Manise Jangir on Arch TV. She's also a co-founder and editor-in-chief of VoicePK.net a digital platform that is focused on human rights. Um, she also serves on the board of the Asma Jahangir Legal Aid Cell, is a founding member of South Asian Women in Media, and a council member of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan. Welcome. Last but, my no, last but by no means least, in the middle of all these powerful ladies, there's this young gentleman over there named Mohammed Saqib Tanvir, um, one of the men behind the curtains. He is a journalist with over a decade's experience. He has done production work and does so for uh, Talat Hussain. He has been with Geo, Sama, Apta, Capital TV. He's a 2023 World Press Institute Fellow, a Shivning Fellow, and a Fellow in the US State Department's Emerging Fellows of Pakistan program. Saqib also is a fact checker, or he has a fact checker, um, and operates Factnama, so his own fact-checking portal, very relevant to our discussion today. Thank you, panelists, for joining us. Um, we are all impacted by the news. Um, even those of us who maybe perhaps a few decades ago stayed away from it, once we started to get smartphones with small screens and then bigger screens, we started to get our news this way. Some of us adopted it really, really quickly, and we love the tech. And I remember myself, when I first used Facebook in 2008 or 9, I thought it was the most incredible invention ever. And I don't know when it went from being the most incredible invention ever to being something I was slightly addicted to, to becoming something that was slightly toxic, to becoming something that I don't want to use, but now I just can't help it. I have to use it all the time. Um, the way we disseminate news has changed over time. And the polarization that we were discussing on a panel yesterday has at least in some part been fueled by the news media as we know now. We all know that news media and content in general, it penetrates more people than ever before. So when it was the Nawaiwak and Dawn newspaper, far fewer people had access to the internet. So we have greater access to information if I want to know something about anything specific, what are the problems that the children of Sialkot have when it comes to the public education system, I can use the internet to find the news, to find the information I want, and develop a responsible hypothesis. But sometimes I'm not so concerned about the issue, and I get it from the news, and then I find out that, well, this news was correct and this news was not. It's difficult now, so while we have access to the information, Things are a bit harder, and with the panelists today, we will try to find out how we might be able to better discern between what is accurate news, maybe know what is actually accurate news, and how to form an opinion, and how to avoid becoming victims of the fake news propaganda that proliferates all across the world, indeed in Pakistan. These days, we are focused, our attention is focused on the Arab-Israeli conflict, and the first thing that came out of that was the topic of Israeli babies being murdered. And we all heard it on all the news platforms. And it came as a barrage. And anybody who wanted to say something different, they were checked by the international media. We still don't know. Some people, Pierce Morgan more recently, were saying, no, I reported a story. No one has said it's not right. So we'll start with you, Manize. Given this broad context of information that is out there, is, and information that we might ourselves want. How do we tackle fake news in the day we live in now? 
Thank you so much for having me, firstly, and uh, I congratulate all the organizers. And actually, I was not lost. I met so many people that I knew that I had to say hello. So I apologize for being late. Um, but also, I think that this is a very important event because I think that it's important for people to meet and, and exchange ideas. So it's, congratulations to you, firstly. Now, to coming to your question, which was that how do we? How do we um, uh, tell the difference between fake news and, and real, real news? news right now when there's so much news? There is this uh, saying in Urdu that the truth is not in the rest. It can only go that far. And after that, you know, people find out. We have struggled with fake news now in the last five years, more so with social media. Because I work on a digital media platform and I'm on mainstream electronic media, I have my own show, um, I've seen the difference, uh, how fake news is so easily gobbled up and swallowed on social media. But on mainstream, for example, there are checks and balances. Whatever you may say about the mainstream, yes, there are problems. I agree to all of them. But there are checks and balances. And uh, those checks and balances, because it's a professional environment, they come into play. The other problem that we were having is that our, some of our leaders were becoming, like they were walking, talking fake news themselves. They were lying to the public. They were giving uh, incorrect information to the public. They were giving such incorrect information that it was laughable. And then what do you do about that fake news? You have to go and investigate that fake news. Yeah. So, I also think that when you create an environment which is now in the electronic media, it permeates through the social media. At the moment, there are lots of uh, restrictions on mainstream media. For example, you cannot uh, take Imran Khan's name. So tomorrow, if something happens to him, we cannot even say that this person has been affected. Now, this is not for the first time. I know a lot of PTI think this is the first time it's happened in Pakistan, but it's not. It began with Altaf Hussain in recent history. I'm not going to go back many, many years when we were younger, but in recent history, when it started with Altaf Hussain. The ban began with Altaf Hussain. And uh, then it was taken to the Lahore High Court. There was a freedom of expression writ petition that uh, his, his lawyers had filed. And the plea that they took was that this is against free expression. You cannot ban a human being. You can ban speech or something that he says. But under no law in the world can you ban a whole human being. Without, because what do you know what you want to do? So you have to ban everything from the beginning. So that was the plea that was taken. Then in 2018, similarly, Nawaz Sharif was banned. And now Imran Khan. So this has been a tasalsul chala hai. Secondly, I think that we have also been restricted from telling the truth. So, for example, I was in Afghanistan and I went and interviewed the Taliban. This is long before the takeover of Kabul. And it was a very difficult interview to get. And I, obviously, there were dangers involved. And we took that risk. And we went to the suburbs of, uh, of uh, Kabul and we interviewed him. When I got my coup and I came back to my station and I said, yes, tonight we will air the interview. And it had, you know, we, we put it out on the social media that it's going to be aired, this, that, and the other. And it was Nawaz's government at that time. Suddenly, uh, uh, it, it all went to ads. My, I mean, I had started the interview. It had gone on for like maybe two minutes and then it suddenly cut to ads. And I got a phone from my editor saying, they have called and said that this interview cannot make it on air. And I said, why? Because right now you are saying that the Taliban are friends. There are some people that we are supporting. If they are your friends, why can't I ask them these questions? I went and complained. And, and, and at that time, there was a delegation of us, which included senior journalists like Hamid Mir, et cetera. And they said to the information minister at the time that, uh, why have you done this? And he turned around and said, you know, nothing is in our hands. The dharnas had started, and the political government was now much weaker. And they turned around and said, now things are slipping out of our hands. So he said, Beta, you can make a documentary on documentary. 
सो so, मुझे तब रियलाइज़ हुआ कि उन वो क्यों चाहते थे कि ये इंटरव्यू बैन हो बिकॉज उसके अंदर जो तालिबान का पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू था और जो उनका एक्सपीरियंस था विद द इंटरक्शन विद द पाकिस्तान स्टेट दे डेंट वॉन्ट दैट टू कम आउट सो वट आई एम सेंग टू यू इज दैट वेन यू क्रिएट दैट इन्वायरमेंट दीज रिस्ट्रिक्शंस के एंड इफ यू लुक एट आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आई एम लिंकिंग इट सो आर्टिकल नाइनटीन सेज Freedom of expression is allowed, but it's conditional. It's conditional upon what? You cannot say anything against the judiciary. You cannot say anything the, against the armed forces. You cannot say anything against friendly countries. अब वो कौन है? वो कब कब तालेबान हमारे दोस्त थे? कब हमारे दुश्मन थे? क्या पता? And you cannot say anything also against the ideology of Pakistan. now consistently i have been now in the media for now 22 years consistently each year i have asked the new information minister please define to me what is the ideology of pakistan and to this day none of the information ministers elected people have been able to define it so ab hum se kya keh rahe hain humne kiske parameters pe aana hai uske parameters pe aana hai jo hukumat mein aaya hai aur yahan pe apni banwana chahta hai is that the parameter that we are going to follow are or are we going to follow the parameter of the truth which is what we owe to our viewer so i think that these things have to be corrected hamara masla fake news nahi hai hamara masla pakistan mein jo baki logon se breaking news ye wo ye sab jagah chalta hai hota hai i worked with indian media for 12 years i worked with the bbc also ye har jagah hota hai and there are mechanisms that as journalists grow they develop there was a time when we used to show you know uh, uh, live breaking breaking mein aa jata tha ki dhamaka ho gaya aur ye nahi ki hum chahte the ki hum dikha de who us zamane mein ye hona shuru hua in 2009 that there used to be a blast we used to send our tv cameras and our reporters and right in front of our cameras there was another blast it was not it was not that we had orchestrated that but that is how they were drawing in people and then killing more people that was the strategy and we got to know about it and we saw the trend and then we started pulling back our camera people but at the same time i remember going to a blast site and there was a woman who was carrying her child and she and maine kaha ye main dikha nahi sakti and she looked at me she said khoon mera hai dard mera hai aur aap dekh bhi nahi sakte so i think ye jo conversations hai na they need to happen with journalists on their own but what we are struggling with right now is not that these conversations that we are even given the space to have this conversations we are fire fighting right now we are fire fighting to get the truth out to you and we are being constricted by even the constitution of pakistan to get the word out to you heavy so i mean i guess uh we are in the digital age but the problem that manise is highlighting is one that dates back to before the digital age i remember a time when i was young when the only source of news was 9 pm khabarnama and you can only imagine what news that was and in that day and age we all took it so seriously bhai khabarnama hai sab chup ho jaye the gospel is coming and now we have all these outlets but manise is talking about censorship that literally exist inside of the constitution itself and so this is definitely something we should consider it kind of predates uh, fake news and sadly for our country where we find ourselves today it is just uh, uh, another example of how we have failed to move out of the 20th century and be able to tackle 21st century problems i mean i was thinking when manise said memel that uh, fake news is not our issue um perhaps manise was referring to pakistan mein fake news is not so much of an issue i remember the first bit of fake news that really struck me as fake was the wmd news in 2001 and 2 when they said that there will be all these wmd and every responsible news outlet in the world new york times washington post bbc sab us kahani pe aage nikle do you believe that they did it knowingly that they were spreading a false story and if so could it be fair to say that you know fake news existed even before and has been peddled even before the technology itself well you know um, the thing is that uh, 
some of them may have known, but mostly the one issue was that they actually bought what their establishment was saying, their establishment. So, so that's the thing, and it happens here a lot. Yes. So whatever the establishment tells you, people think, oh, we have access to this information, this must be correct, this must be the gospel truth. But as it turns out, most of it is fake, even if they provide you with papers, files, on politicians, uh, you know, uh, a lot of those things are just made up. And, uh, but they want you to spread it because they've given you the task and now it's your uh, time to actually, if you have a, a, a television show, you'll talk about it on there. If you have a YouTube uh, channel, you'll actually talk about it in your vlog or wherever you can. I mean, you can use Twitter and all that. So, so there's that. But I do think that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Manisa didn't completely say that, you know, fake news is not an issue here. She talked about fake news on social media. And that is a huge problem in Pakistan. Uh, that, you know, there is so much m disinformation. So, so, of course, we have to uh, make a distinction between um, a mistake, misinformation, disinformation, fake news, propaganda. Because the thing is, one thing is that, you know, if I'm sitting here and I say something, you know, the population of Pakistan is 15 crore or something. And that's, of course, not true. But it's just like a typo or it's a mistake that, you know, I, I made it while I was talking. It's not something that I did deliberately to spread fake news. Then there is disinformation, proper fake news, which is basically, uh, a, a part of a malicious campaign. You know it is fake, you know it's not true, but you're spreading it for whatever reason, uh, uh, for your vested interest, to actually uh, for an agenda, you're working on something, there's that. I mean, we've seen that in the last five years, especially when it comes to media organizations or journalists, that you know, one political party especially targeted a lot of journalists and media organizations, discrediting their work. So it wasn't what Mehmet Safraz is saying or what Munize Jahangir is saying. Because we are critical voices or we've been criticizing them objectively, but they don't like us because their policy was you're either with us or against us. So they start dis, uh, discrediting us. Lifafa, lifafa, pesilet. No, no evidence whatsoever. But the thing is, oh, anything that Mehmet now says will be discredited because we've spread it far and wide on social media. We've said things about her. Doesn't matter what she's saying, even if she's saying something in our favor. Memel is saying is, it must be a sellout, you know, I mean, must be lying, must be propagating noon leak or people's party ka propaganda. Ye wali baat hai. So, so this is something that, you know, that happened. I mean, I'll tell you another example of fake news, which was, I don't know why it was done, but when Fawad Chaudhary was arrested for the first time, and uh, Fawad is a very uh, old friend of mine before he joined politics and everything. So I was with him in the hospital, in the court. After that, my clip was viral, I was in the hospital talking to him. Yes, yes, every place was going on. I was talking to him, he was asking him, and I was talking to him. And suddenly, Twitter was abuzz with that I am his sister-in-law. I am Hibba Fawad, I am his wife, I am his wife. There was no one who tweeted this. Somebody said that to my husband, you know, Mehmel is Hiba Fawad's sister. He said, she's my wife. She's not related to Hiba anyway. Like, I don't know if you know that you have to do it. I don't know if you have to do it. I don't know if you have to do it. I don't know if you to you know, a lot of our relatives, who मेरे जो है इन लॉज में और वैसे भी और दोस्त भी कई और वो कह रहे वाकई का कोई है मतलब हाफ सिस्टर है स्टेप सिस्टर है सिस्टर क्या है सो सो ये एक एक ट्वीट जो के बाद में इतनी फैल गई ये इस तरह से होता है एंड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डोंट बिलीव अस इवन नाउ इफ वी आई टेल देम कि नहीं मेरे कोई रिश्तेदारी नहीं है बट ये बट ये चीज हो जाती है सो यू नो इस तरीके से द प्रोपेगेंडा थिंग वर्क्स एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू इन टुडेस डिजिटल एज स्पेशली बिकॉज़ देखें वी टॉक अबाउट द प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ सोशल मीडिया येस्टरडे व्हेन इट कम्स टू the Israeli and Palestine conflict, there's a lot of fact-checking, there are a lot of videos coming out about Palestine that mainstream media wouldn't show you. But you know, there are also the cons, and the cons are fake news, how to check it. And also in this, uh, 
whatever, I mean, the breaking news concept is also there for, not just for the electronic media, but also for digital media outlets. So there's always a race, chahi khabar aage, somebody has tweeted this, without verifying it, they'll just, you know, publish it. Balki digital me keda, jaldi ho raat hai. But we at the current wait and verify and then we publish it. Ye nahi hoga ke abhi aai hai video aur baghair mere check hai. And there are so many tools. I mean, Saqib can tell you about those tools. Uh, there are, a lot of people are now actually training media organizations. Media Matters for Democracy, jo hai, Asad Beg or Sadaf Beg ki. Actually, they do wonderful training. They have a toolkit, proper toolkit on fact checking and you know, uh, how to uh, check uh, disinformation, counter check it, how to uh, check claims and counter check them and this is very important because the fake news we've seen that in the elections, especially when you know, uh, elections are going to happen, it's very fast. We've seen this in India, ke andar bhi dekha hai. Uh, communal riots, bhi jo hai, wo social media ki fake news, WhatsApp forwards, ke upar huye huye. India, ke andar, is tarah ki cheeze hoti hai. Pakistan, ke andar bhi ye cheeze jo hai, bahut zyada ab us tarike se use honge, they'll be weaponized. So it's always important to fact check, to verify Google pe itani cheeze hai, aap Google, aap jisa image hai, matab ek eh, choti si cheeze hai, floods the, floods ke andar, there were a lot of videos circulating about 2010 ki floods ki videos, thik hai na? They were not recent floods ki videos, uh, 2022 ki. You can just fact check, you can actually just put it on Google, check ke kaan se video wo purani hai, nahi hai, sabse pehle kaan share hui thi, bahut easy hai. Because if you spread fake news, thik hai, aapko views mil jayenge, sara kuch ho jayega, but you will lose your credibility. And credibility for journalists, for a media organization is the most important thing. So I think ye uh, important hai ki, you know, we should also realize ke haan, views mil jayenge, कुछ मिलियन व्यूज मिल जाएंगे पैसे भी बहुत लोगों ने यूट्यूब पे तो ये बहुत चीज़ हुई है कि इतनी फेक न्यूज़ उन्होंने फैला कर वीलॉग्स करके और इतने इतने पैसे लोगों ने कमाए हैं तो शायद वो पैसे की वजह से करते हैं बट यू वेंचुअली लूज योर क्रेडिबिलिटी इट्स नॉट वर्थ इट आई कैन थिंक ऑफ मैनी पीपल इन द इन द मीडिया हु आई वुड थिंक हैव लॉस क्रेडिबिलिटी बट दे हैव मिलियंस ऑफ फॉलोअर्स एनी वे साकिब आप तो आपने तो प्रोडक्शन का काम किया हुआ है यू वर्क विद दीज एंकर्स एंड सो आई हैव एन आइडिया दैट प्रोडक्शन इज़ द बैक बोन एंड द थॉट प्रोसेस ऑफ व्हाट गोज इनटू एवरी शो दैट यू डू एंड सो लॉट ऑफ दिस रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑफ फैक्ट चेकिंग एंड मेकिंग शोर द स्टोरी इज ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉल्स ऑन योर शोल्डर्स मस्ट बी अलॉट ऑफ टेंशन बिकॉज आप मैंने तो देखा है कि देर आर anchors who are trying to be neutral and if they give a post against one government for instance they suddenly they will get called an imran do by someone but then the next time they will post in favor of imran khan's human rights and suddenly they will be you know calling him a nawaz sharif supporter or something like that and so you know a lot of the audience is not educated so it i mean they come in at separate times. I remember my own mother used to be in a political party and eight, ten years later she makes a tweet and someone says she's still in that political party. How did she make this tweet? And it's like, get with the program. So people don't know, awareness come in, you have responsibility and objectivity hai, and you have to make sure you don't publish any fake news. How do you do it? So, uh I'll give you a very recent example. I think it was two days ago or three days ago, CM Punjab was visiting a graveyard or something like that. So, and there was a red carpet rolled out for him. So Talat sent me a message and he said, can you verify if this photo is true or not? So we sat and you know we started doing the reverse image search and everything. And after five minutes, we found out that this was released by the Punjab government itself. And we informed it to him. But even then, we still have some sort of, you know, uh, some sort of, doubt that even Punjab government could have made a mistake or something like that. Mm. So this is this inbuilt skepticism that we have as a journalist that we question everything. I remember when I started uh, my university and we were taught journalism, our, te our teacher told us that if your mother tells you that she loves you, verify it. That's, that's the mindset that we are supposed to have. We have to <laughs> question everything. But I really want to go back to what you said that if uh, fake news predates technology or not. Yeah. I think it predates humanity actually. Uh, I mean, uh, Hazrat Adam, he was uh, expelled from, uh, from the heavens because of a fake news, because the devil came to him and he gave him the fake news. So it's as old as humanity is. And for me, uh, 
when on a panel like this, when journalists are asked if fake news is a journalistic problem, for me it's not. I mean, it's a societal problem. Journalists are, I mean, it's a huge opportunity for us. I love fake news. I mean, if there weren't fake news, if there wasn't a vacuum of authentic information, I would be out of business. I mean, I would want that there's more and more fake news. So people come to me and say, such kya bata de. So that's why I think, <laughs> yeah. And also coming back to your point of feedback, I mean, people throw a lot of terms at us, fake, uh, like gifafa or everything. I mean, uh, we as journalists, I think uh, uh, we also have to be cautious of the feedback that we are receiving. I mean, we have to be very selective in the feedback that we get. I mean, not every person can come to us and say that you are uh, a fake news peddler or you know you uh, or you have no leaks I think we have to be very cognizant of the fact that we have feedback kiska I, I can give you an example of uh, let's give you example of Talat's Twitter account he doesn't use it I use his Twitter account so he doesn't know what feedback what people are commenting about him so that does not cloud his views when he tweets it again so, for example, if he's tweeted something against Imran Khan or Nawaz Sharif, and there are people who are accusing him of being pro Nawaz Sharif or pro Imran Khan, it does not cloud his next tweet. Otherwise, if he, if he would get that feedback, I'm sure he's a human. I mean, he would say, Yaar, pishli bar Imran ko ka tha, mujh isko balance karna hai. So, we make sure that there is a filter placed, and we make sure that the feedback that needs to get to him, it gets to him. So, he yeah. tweets himself. Yeah, yeah. No, no. But he doesn't look at the feedback. No, no, no. He sends me the tweet. He okay. does not have a Twitter app in his mobile phone. Okay. Okay. I post it, and then he gets the replies, and then we share only replies that concern him. I mean, I mean, if I were to give an example, we only share like two or three replies per month. I mean, we don't get a lot of good comments. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but that's how it is. Uh, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. That's how it is. You have to hold true to your principles, even if the opinion goes against you. Absolutely. I suppose that would Absolutely. be something a journalist does. Uh, Nino, um, you are the citizen journalist, I suppose, uh, uh, policy activist like me. Um, you know, I have my frustrations with the media um, and issue-based content being less than I desire, um, focusing on the real problems of Pakistan as opposed to what, you know, private charter the former prime minister has returned to Pakistan on or what's happening in somebody's house and witch doctoring and you know all the crazy stuff that kind of uh, is sensational and, and, and takes up a lot of space in the media. I want to know uh, when the government teachers will start teaching in the government schools so that the children of Pakistan will have a brighter future. I'm not interested in whether it's Altaf Hussain in London doing something or whatever. How do you um, uh, balance this? I mean, I know you also have been a chorus of, you, you, you do guest analysis on Al Jazeera and other platforms. Um, what do you think of our colleagues here and the way they tackle their work on, in the media? I've, uh, in the last couple of years, I've primarily focused uh, almost every kind of uh, interest of mine um, uh, to Balochistan for the reason that uh, there's no news, there's no fake, uh, there's no, uh, you have no information on Balochistan. The last uh, news that you received was an attack on Gwadar and you know, these many soldiers were killed. Or there was a protest, uh, you know, in uh, here, or these many ex were martyred over here. What do you know about Balochistan? What do you know about the people of Balochistan? Um, the news, whether it's breaking news or the hype or the fake or the content, um, I can very um, easily with great confidence say uh, here and here, um, the content of uh, that part of Pakistan is um, very low in priority and hence um, its analysis, its factoring in um, into uh, the public discourse um, is exactly in that priority. Um, and hence, uh, in a tiny way, uh, whether it's relief work or writing, uh, so the activism has to come along with writing, uh, and I'm very thankful to the Friday Times and Raza Rumi in particular, 
uh, giving me the space that if I want to write 14 articles uh, on one district of Balochistan, he gives me that space because no one else is. Um, you know, in all the platforms, in, in all the uh, variations. So, um, the, uh, what we call, uh, you know, hype and the analysis that we are giving, we are actually uh, talking about uh, a very small part of uh, Pakistan in terms of land. It may be the majority of, you know, uh, the population, but it does not include 44% uh, of, you know, of Pakistan, Balochistan, and probably also uh, FATA and you know, what is called you know, the blackout areas. Um, I find social media with all its problems um, at least has provided an opportunity for individuals who do have access to the internet, who, ha who do have access to a phone, and many women don't. It's almost you know, culturally impossible for them to uh, have a phone. But those who do have internet and Wi-Fi and all have a platform in which that they can articulate their uh, perspective, point of view. So for example, the PTM, you know, uh, Pakistan, you know, the Tahafuz movement, no one would have known them in you know, a Tahafuz movement unless there was social media. It's only when they came to Islamabad then journalists came to meet them, et cetera, and who's, you know, Manzoor Pashtin, et cetera, et cetera. So, and there are other voices as well, you know, where uh, for whatever reason, whether it's self-censoring or, you know, uh, how the environment that we do exist, the reality uh, check, so to speak, uh, does not allow uh, information and dialogue and discussion um, to the audience, but also, uh, the so-called um, analysts and those who are, uh, you know, uh, the carriers of information and analysis. I mean, if you profile actually who are on television, you know, where do they come from? What is their social background? What is their language background? Um, you know, it, it is 80%, uh, maybe 85% uh, from one province. And that is just not a reflection um, of the diversity and the point of view of Pakistan. So um, thank you very much uh, for giving me an opportunity. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the Beacon House and uh, the School of Tomorrow. It's very, very important that the younger generation um, think um, and question uh, whatever kind of information that you are uh, accessing, whether it's social media or the print or the visual, and one hopes that you are equipped with tools to be able to at least begin the process of questioning and thinking that that uh, which you are being presented may or may not be fully accurate or the full picture or the full story. And I think if we are able to have a generation of people to uh, discern that this is just a launching pad for a wider inquiry into that subject matter, um, we will be in a better place in the next generation. It's great perspective. Um, there is this idea that in the digital age of media, we live in an echo chamber. In fact, it is more than an idea. Um, the moment I uh, try to buy a plane ticket to go somewhere, uh, for the next month, I'm getting the ads for that same destination from all those airlines. It's far more nefarious when it comes to political viewpoints. You know, at first, I also, right in the beginning, thought that, oh my God, my worldview is the right worldview. Everyone I know is saying that exactly the same thing that I believe. And then, you know, a point comes where you meet someone and you say, and you talk to them and you think that person is rational, intelligent, and they say something completely opposite to what you believe. At first, it can be annoying. You can get a little bit frustrated. 
But then it is, I think it is a responsibility on all of us, something that has been alluded to in this discussion, that we use our own brain cells and challenge our own values and viewpoints um, as objectively and neutrally as we possibly can. Um, and then maybe fake news will become a bit easier to digest. But the thing I, um, and before I come back to the panel, um, there is one panelist who, you know, I'm still struggling to decide whether the AI should be treated with the same respect as all of us. I was in a panel, a chat GPT panel, and I wasn't quite sure after that discussion whether the AI, you know, the AI's feedback is really important, but I suppose we'll give it one go and then the panelists can share with us whether they think the AI is sensible or not. So her name is Sarah. Um, Sarah, can you tell us if there is one piece of news or subject of the news in Pakistan that the media here is unable to speak about? As an AI, I can't monitor real-time events or restrictions. However, freedom of press varies globally. What specific topic are you interested in? The specific topic we are interested in is um, uh, Parachinar. Why is the media not allowed to visit Apologies Parachinar? for the incomplete message. Could you please specify the topic you're interested in exploring within Pakistan's media landscape? I'm sorry, but as an AI, I don't have real-time data access, so I can't provide current information about Bara Channel. Could you provide more context? It's a perfect response because this is the exact response that you will get when you ask a government minister. This is the same they would say. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. I think you just made a case for uh, you just made a case for Maria Morangzeb being replaced by uh, Sarah the AI. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, would the panelists care to comment on, uh, uh, on, a, on a story that... Without uh, specific details or context, it's challenging to provide a... Sol Is she gone now? Okay. Thank you, Sarah, but no thank you. Um, would the panelists care to comment on a subject uh, that is unable to be discussed uh, on the broadcast media here today at the School of Tomorrow conference? We think we are looking for subjects that we can discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Sarah interview Firdaus Ashikavan. I would love to see Sarah interview, you know, others that I would, uh, you know, yeah. That and, and it would be very interesting for me to see that. So, dekhe, you can have all of this, but there is something called emotional intelligence also. I remember reading those stories which I grew up on of, you know, where you began with the human interest and you say that here is this woman you know, sitting under the sky, looking up, having this feeling. Yeah, the, those were the stories that really interested me in telling the stories of the people. Mm. And we began with that under General Musharraf's rule when I first came into television. And we were the first kids to come into television. And then suddenly, Sheikh Rashid's statements became far more important than the story of the person. And we saw statement journalism rise. Now what we are seeing is that areas that we were allowed to report from, Waziristan, South Waziristan, Parachanar, uh, uh, even some areas of Bajor, our reporters have been ejected from this, physically told to leave. Right now, since the caretaker government has come, there has been bloodshed in Parachinar. None of us know about it. Why not? Not because we haven't tried to access the story, we have. But nobody is allowed to report from there. There are some local reporters who report, so it's not that the, the media is not trying to report. Balochistan, you mentioned Balochistan. Shuru mein jab rating meters aaye the, so I remember there were these 
यू नो टाइट जेंटलमैन यूज टू कम विद दीज आई पैड्स एंड से कि ये देखो इधर तुम्हारा ऊपर जा रहा था तो कौन बोल रहा था इधर नीचे जा रहा था तो कौन बोल रहा था जहाँ नीचे जा रहा था उस गेस्ट को कभी नहीं बुलाना यू नो इट वॉज एज सिंपल एज दैट एंड आई रिमेंबर दैट आई इंटरव्यूड एट दैट टाइम यूसुफ रजा गिलानी and i was at express but on the other show suddenly their this thing was going up graph so is it either kon tha aur idhar to prime minister tha udhar kon tha so i think ji udhar transgender ek dusre ke kapde phad rahe the to unhone mujhe unhone mujhe kaha ke dekhi na wazir e azam ko bhi koi nahi sunta to you see there was a time where media became obsessed with ratings and then after that came social media let me give you also a little bit about who really owns these tv channels very under, important to understand that before the tv channels were owned by people who had newspapers etc so they were interested in the news like if you went and spoke to an editor they would be interested now a lot of tv channels are owned by property tycoons who either there is a business interest in there or there are other interests and so the role of the editor is gone and they don't feel the need to have the role of the editor or jo bhi aaya hai ya kisi ki safarish hai ya kisi ki nahi hai so the whole landscape has changed but in the beginning when when they started putting rating meters why did we show altaf hussain so much the reason was that there were 200 meters in karachi aur agar pura balochistan bhi milke aapka show dekhe na to ek bhi wo nahi aayega rating because there were no rating meters not a single one and I, when i used to do a show on balochistan my producer used to come like this in the you know into the office please madam please madam you know so there was uh, th this was done main aapko ye samjhane ki koshish kar rahi hu how the state has brought in censorship how the state has peddled fake news you talked about wmds those stories were fed you don't think the stories are fed to us every single day uh, two uh, militants were killed who are these two militants what about ke police ne every day there is a target killing in uh, extra judicial killing in karachi by the sindh police who are these people so i think to we as journalists have learned more and when i work with the indian journalists also i've realized that we as pakistani journalists do not trust our state and we have good reason not to trust our state because of these reasons and because of that journalists across pakistan push for the truth now what happens to them when they push for the truth several of our journalists have been picked up this remains today one of the most dangerous countries for journalists to operate one of our producers has been picked up has been threatened ki agar tum ye khabar karoge to tumhe maar denge to ye jo ab inhone hamare liye parameter banaya and i want to go back to the pemra ordinance because for the purposes of your topic it's very important the recent pemra ordinance that the the um the amendment that has come into it was done very cleverly on the one hand journalists were told that you will be able to get your salaries on time to hame wo thoda sa shahad unhone makhiyon ke liye dal diya uske sath sath unhone misinformation ki definition itni vague kar di ki wo kisi time bhi aapko utha sakte they can arrest you so we said to them that look when people make laws they make specific laws and they make laws to stop a criminal activity you do not make laws because you fear that there is something that's going to happen and you do not make laws that are vague because those are bad laws and under that there in a state like pakistan they will be misused to curb freedom of expression so please do not do it and we went and pleaded with the government please do not do it but they did and similarly with the previous government with the pti government they did the same thing what we had also demanded was to protect all of this under the journalist protection act was and i was part of that committee ke you will uh, have a, a a committee which will sit within the parliament and it will look at these issues now the law has been passed it has been several years now that committee has not been formed so our journalists when they are picked up where do we go who do we speak to and when they throw article 19 in our face and say sedition so many of our journalists have been slapped with sedition what do they trace it back to article 19 and article 19 itself is so vague friendly countries ideology of pakistan 
what is this glory of the judiciary and glory of the armed forces which is so deeply involved in politics to aap hathi ke bare mein nahi baat kar sakte to aap kya baat karenge ek journalist who was picked up he said to me bibi main jahan bhi paon rakhta hu to wo niche se nikal aate hain aap kehte hain ki hum iske upar report na kare to phir hum kya kare so i think that these things have to be also looked at very carefully the rest of it how people attack me on social media i have no problems with they can attack the day that they don't i get worried oh god you know what have i done that nobody is talking about it so i think that when they attack us that's not a problem journalists have a thick skin you know we've been through reporting now 20 years of reporting you go through war zones you go through this this is not a big deal for us we can handle it we have mechanisms to do it but what we cannot handle is a state that is adamant on seeing us as enemies a state that is hiding the truth from its own citizens and a state that has a created a structure whereby only the people in power can control the information that is what is what is unacceptable to us Th thank you for being so brave we have 6 uh, uh, minutes uh, left um but that was a very important statement and i'm totally behind it uh, look the truth is is what it is we are living in some kind of an orwellian state and um the journalists who are supposed to be the bulwarks of democracy in any vibrant democracy they are a bulwark are telling us that they are not necessarily able to do that memel wanted to uh, say something to mr um, samuel isn't it to point out that you know a lot of media owners now are property tycoons yeah. and you know ki what can't we talk about hum log sensitive cheezon ki to baat karte the jis tarah missing persons ek bahut bada issue hai us pe log baat nahi kar sakte aur cheeze lekin the consequences of media owners being property tycoons is ki aap ruda jaisi cheez ke upar aap baat nahi kar sakte ruda jo ravi urban development authority ke project jo imran khan sahab ne bhi bahut zyada apne time mein promote kiya tha lekin wo isliye kyunki ye jo media owners jo property tycoons hain in sab ka stake hai ruda mein aur ruda pe kab mein basically kabza ho raha hai uske andar logo ko facts नहीं बताया जा रहे कि गवर्नमेंट के उस पर खरीदा जाता है और फिर वो प्रॉपर्टी प्राइवेट प्रॉपर्टी डीलर्स को वो लैंड जो है बेच दिया जाता है लैंड ग्रैबिंग हो रही है जुल्म हो रहा है फार्मर्स के साथ बट नो बडी कैन टॉक अबाउट इट क्योंकि वो ओनर्स हैं इस वक्त फिर आप देखें बहुत सारे लोग पूछते हैं मलिक रियाज के बारे में क्यों नहीं टी चैनल्स में नाम क्यों नहीं लिया जाता वो बहुत बड़े एडवर्टाइजर हैं टी चैनल्स के तो मलिक रियाज का नाम या बीप आउट हो जाता है आप लाइव चैनल में लाइव प्रोग्राम में समटाइम्स यू गेट अवे विद इट यू कैन टॉक अबाउट हिज यू कैन टेक हिज नेम बट मोस्टली मलिक रियाज का नाम इवन गवर्नमेंट के लोग नहीं लेते अपनी प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंसेज में वो 190 मिलियन पाउंड्स के केस की बात करते हैं ये नहीं बताते वो प्रॉपर्टी टाइकून कौन है मतलब ये होता है क्योंकि वो पोलिटिकल पार्टीज के साथ भी हैं तो ये जो चीज़ें ये भी हमें याद रखना चाहिए कि एक जो फाइनेंशियल और इकोनॉमिक एस्पेक्ट है जो गेंस हैं फाइनेंशियल इसकी वजह से भी बहुत ज़्यादा लोग बात नहीं कर सकते और हम अपने मीडिया की सेंसरशिप की बात करते हैं इस्टेब्लिशमेंट की वजह से बहुत सारी रेड लाइन्स हैं बट अब ये ओनर्स की अपनी रेड लाइन्स होंगी ये ओनर्स आपको रोकेंगे बहुत सारी चीज़ें रिपोर्ट ना करने पे और बहुत सारी फेक न्यूज़ भी ये चलवाएंगे दूसरे के खिलाफ जब उनकी कोई लड़ाई होगी सो दैट इज़ ऑल्सो अ वेरी बिग प्रॉब्लम वेन इट कम्स टू पाकिस्तान स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट इन द मीडिया दे एग्जिस्टेड बिफोर दे एग्जिस्ट नाउ साकिब बाय डोंट यू हैव अ गो यू आर सो आई वांट टू गो बैक टू बलूचिस्तान एंड आई कैन एक्चुअली गिव इट टू 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 इन राइटिंग आज आप बलूचिस्तान के अंदर सॉरी आज आप बलूचिस्तान में 200 मीटर लगा दें रेटिंग के वी स्टिल वांट टू रिपोर्ट बलूचिस्तान वी वांट टू रिपोर्ट बलूचिस्तान नॉट बिकॉज़ द एस्टैब्लिशमेंट स्टॉप्स अस नॉट बिकॉज़ देयर इज नो कमर्शियल इंटरेस्ट आई थिंक वी नीड टू रियलाइज दैट वी हु वर्क फॉर नेशनल मीडिया are the national media and we only talk about issues that look sexy to us for example if i were to talk about education you won't invite me to this panel i you only invite people who report on sexy beats which is politics and national media is supposed to report only on uh, you know national issues which is the the politics you go to uk you go to the the us you know you would find cnn talking about national issues you would find bbc or sky news talking about national issues but how do they report local issues they have local tv channels who report on local issues i mean i am a punjabi and i can tell you that there are a lot of issues of punjab which are very important to us but they've never been reported despite us having a lot of rating meters i mean tell me if anybody of you has seen a report on uh, uh, agriculture in punjab how climate change has affected uh, 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 punjab farmer or even smog i mean has have you seen a good human interest 
story on how smog is affecting the kids. I mean, you won't find those stories on TV uh, or on national media because it's national media. You, you can only flourish and report on local stories when you have local media. Unfortunately, unlike West, we do not have good local TV channels or even local newspapers who can pick up these issues. National media will talk about the government and we should not expect that they will not talk about any regional issue. And it, it, it's fair because we are national media. What is national? I mean, when you want it to record deck, then all of a sudden it becomes national. But when it comes to the people, all of a sudden it becomes, what, local? I mean, so your own terminology is very uh, selective, you know. Uh, when you want to lens it, when it comes to taking, then Balochistan is Pakistan. But when it comes to reporting and giving access to, whether it's rights, voice, or point of view, all of a sudden, uh, they become 4% uh, of your population. So, you know, th this is absolutely rubbish. But what you did say um, in terms of what is uh, sexy or what is familiar, actually, is because those who are in the centralized uh, national television, they come from one province. I mean, uh, in uh, we don't have an English language uh, channel, let alone uh, media personnel who can speak anything other than Urdu and Punjabi. I mean, you know, like you are on an Urdu program, half of you are joking in Punjabi. I mean, you know, like your reference is Urdu and Punjabi. You, you are out of touch and have very little experience um, as a profession, access, travel, uh, nuance, understanding topically of anything outside of the four cities and four, five times, 20 times travel to uh, outside of these five cities. You know very little about the parts of Pakistan that require the same kind of detailed point of view information at a national, federal level that feeds back into a conversation that is holistically Pakistani. So this, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, that's just a cop. So, uh, just on the definition of what's national, I mean, you, everybody reads Dawn, right, or any other newspaper. Why is the lead always politics? Why do city pages are at like page four or page five? Because that's what defines, these are the editorial decisions that we take in newsroom, which story has the most national outreach. We are a mass media. I mean, we can only be mass media if we reach out to the masses. Um, we, we, are, we are at the end of our time, uh, but quickly, uh, because this was about pursuit uh, uh, of the truth, um, there was a question up here about how one might better fact check uh, information that they get online, if any of you quickly want to respond to that. A very small line. If there's a news item or a TV broadcast which isn't properly referenced, uh, we use this technology in crypto blockchain where you can reference back to where the ledger came from. You, you have all the sources. If the story does not have a source, reject it. That's it. If, if it doesn't say, for example, if it says that Joe Biden said that there were decapitated babies, but it doesn't say that Joe Biden ke lava unhone se source liye, then you have to reject it. If you source, then you have to story. Ko, Mamani, say quickly. I'll just say because I want to say something about the local media. Our local media is actually excellent. I'm sorry, I have to say this because I work with local media channels. Abhi, for uh, fake news, we have to say that in Kohistan, we have to say in Kohistan, we have to say that the NGOs have to say that they have to say that they should all be married forcibly. Ab, how did I check that fact? I called up the local newspaper there. I know them because I've been a journalist for 20 years. I called him up. I said, ye theek hai ke nahi hai. Mujhe iski information la ke do. Mujhe us jirge ka batao. Mujhe ye batao. And because I know ke ye professional log hai and we've had a working relationship, I can trust him. So I think that the local media is excellent in Pakistan. I read the local media. I, re I read ke Balochistan, Khaybar se ye khabre nikalti hain. Aur wo choti choti cheezon ko bhi karte hain. To hamare media mein koi kharabi nahi hai. Ye zroor hai ke hume usko sexy banana aana chahiye. We should make this news sexy. That's our job. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I would just say uh, you've learned a lot from this panel. It's been a great panel, by the way. We thank you, Manize, Memel, Saqib, Nino. 
Um, we uh, uh, get a lot of news. There's accurate news, there is fake news, but the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, the responsibility is on you. Try to get out of your echo chamber, hear what the other side has to say, and form a better, more informed opinion. Thank you all. Um, there is a wonderful, interactive, immersive art exhibit uh, in Gallery 6. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, thanks to Google for Education for sponsoring the event. Thank you all very much. Thank you.